All right, everyone, it's Mr. Rops. And Mr. Co. And we are here to talk about vertex forms of quadratics. And there's two podcasts for this one. The first one, these two podcasts are going to deal with the fact that we're going to learn how to read information from a quadratic in vertex form so we can graph it. Ooh. Then, wow, what a crazy slide. Got a bit of a time lag going on there. There is. There it goes. Oh, okay. Then we're going to talk about domain and range. And finally, we're going to... Given some information, you're going to find the quadratic equation. So we want to be able to get a quadratic, graph it, and then take a graph, and then find the equation. It works both ways. Both ways around. Right. Okay. And so when we look at our equation... Nope. Wow. This has been really slow, huh? Oh, there it is. There's the general there um, right. vertex form of an equation. Right. This H and K are our vertical shift, horizontal shift, and so the vertex ends up being H and K. And our A value is basically the vertical stretch, which makes it fatter, skinny, and, or upside down, or right side up, concave up or down. Yep. So let's go and actually do a problem. Let's see what we have to do. Okay, first scenario, y equals negative 3x plus 1 all squared plus 2. Ooh. Write down the vertex. Well, I know <coughs> here is my H and my K. That is going to make my vertex. So the vertex is, be careful here, opposite sign, negative 1, comma, 2. Okay, because in the general form of the equation, it was x minus h, so we've taken away negative 1. Right. Okay. Axis of symmetry, well, that comes from our vertex. I know it goes through the vertex, and so it's always x equal to negative 1. Whatever this value here is, whatever this value yeah. here is, makes my axis of symmetry. And that's our vertical line. Yep. Right. The next thing we want to take a look at is our x-intercepts. Well, in general, to find x-intercepts, we need y to equal 0. That's where it crosses the x-axis. So we set our equation equal to 0 for y. Our y is 0. And then we're going to solve. Plus 1 squared plus 2. And the easiest way to do this one is to bring the 2 over. So I subtract 2. Negative 2 is negative 3x plus 1 squared. And then I'm going to divide the equation by negative 3. And so I have 2 thirds, the negatives cancel, is equal to x plus 1 quantity squared. Okay. At this point, what am I going to do now there, Mr. Cole? Um, so you're going to take the square root of these now? Or? I am going to take the square root. So when I take the square root, I have to be careful to make sure that I make it a positive or negative square root. So I have x add 1 is plus or minus the square root of 2 thirds. Okay. Subtract 1 from both sides. And so my x is going to be negative 1 plus or minus the square root of two-thirds. Those are my x-intercepts. Not very pretty to look at, but they are them nonetheless. Okay, so we could write them out separately, can we? Or we could yep. just write them out once and, and just say that plus or minus sign tells us that that's two different uh, roots, right. two different zeros. All right. I could write it out long form like that, where this is on. All right, so there's my x-intercepts. The y-intercepts, let's change to a different color so we can start to see the difference. This is when x equals 0. And so to find the y-intercept, I just plug it into my equation. y is equal to negative 3, 0 plus 1 squared, plus 2. And I compute. Negative 3 times 1 squared plus 2. It's negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. And so y equals negative 1 is the y-intercept. Okay. okay, so we should have enough information now to be able to do a pretty decent sketch of the graph, right? right. We've got the y-intercept, the two zeros, mm -hmm. and the vertex. All right, so let's make a line and a line, and we'll start to put on some of this information. First thing we know is the vertex, is negative 1, 2. So we'll estimate here negative 1, 1, 2. Two. There is my vertex. 
Next bit of information that we know the axis of symmetry is x equal to negative 1. So let's get a nice dotted line here. I know it's going to fall on cross over here somewhere. Nicely done. All right. And then I know my y intercept is negative 1. So if I go here now, negative 1 is about right here. I know it's going through here. Symmetry says there's going to be another point somewhere over here. I can okay. reflect that. Now, my x-intercepts, well... I don't think we even need to use those, I do we? No, know. I, I can estimate negative 1 plus a little bit, which is less than 1. So negative 1 plus a little bit and minus a little bit. I'm 2 thirds, I'm going to be smaller than 2 thirds. So I'm going to have my graph is going to be something like that. All right. I'm not okay. super concerned how, how no, it's... accurate it looks, but that's the right idea. I know it's going to be upside down because it has a negative 3 out front. Okay, and we'll try and get it to look like a, a parabola, so making sure it's getting steeper and steeper as we're going down, right? Right, exactly. Okay, and then finally, what is the y value when x is 7? Well, to do that calculation, I take my equation here. Let's tidy this up a bit. Oh. It's tidied too much. I made my negative 2, which is really supposed to be positive 2. Okay, so if I want to do this last bit, x is negative 7, I take my 7 and I plug it in for x. So y is equal to negative 3, 7 plus 1 squared, plus 2. And now let's just do my order of operations inside the parentheses first to get me 8. Okay. And I get 64 times a negative 3. That is a big number that I'm not sure of. What is that? That is 192. Okay, remembering the negative side. A yep. negative plus 2, which makes negative 190. So the y value is negative 190. This makes a coordinate point 7 comma negative 190. And then we have one more to go. The Let's point get a bit of room. on the parabola. What are we going to do for this there, Mr. Cole? Okay, so what we need to do is substitute our x value, negative 1, and our y value, 3, into our equation and see if, see if both sides equal each other. So 3 equals negative 3. x is negative 1. Oh, eraser. x is negative 1 plus 1 squared plus 2. Order of operations has to do this first. That's 0 squared is 0 plus 2. So 3, that 0 plus is 2. Okay. Well, that's not true. So therefore, my conclusion is negative 1, 3 is not on parabola. Okay, good.